Amen. <clears throat> well, good morning. Nice, man. First, first, first try. We're good to go. <clears throat> Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad. Um, last week I commented on um, my uh, <clears throat> my wife vetoing my my Easter um, T-shirt, and so I told you guys I would wear it the next week. And so here here is the here is my my what I was gonna wear for Easter. Um, <laughs> t-shirt that I was vetoed on, so I'm wearing it, wearing it this week. But anyway, um, <laughs> God is good, and, and, and um, it was exciting last week to celebrate Easter Sunday, uh, celebrate Resurrection Sunday, and to start our series on, on miracles. And so we had a chance to talk about, okay, the greatest miracle, the foundational miracle, the foundational piece to this whole Jesus thing, which is the resurrection, which is the resurrection of, of, of Jesus. Um, what we believe, what we hold to, who we are, our identity would, would not be what it could be or what it is if it wasn't for the resurrection. It is uh, the single most uh, important moment in all of history was the fact that Jesus Christ died for our sins and came back from the dead. David Wilkerson says this, how quickly we forget God's great deliverances in our lives. How easily we take for granted the miracles he performed in our past. And when I read this quote, this quote hit me because, um, and we've talked about this as a staff here, we've had conversations, we've had meetings, and this has come up. It's so easy for us to lose sight of all the things that God has already done because we are in a situation that maybe is a challenge or that maybe is difficult. It's so easy for us. We're, we're going through life, and God is moving, and we see God doing stuff, and then all of a sudden something gets difficult or something gets tough, and it's like you know, instant amnesia. We forget all that God has brought us through, and we're like, God, why are you doing this to me? Forgetting all the times that we've seen him faithful, all the times we've seen him answer our prayers, all the things that we've seen him do, and so, yet, and yet so it's so easy for us to forget. It's so easy for us to so quickly just out of sight, out of mind, and then we're going, God, what are you doing now, or what's happening now? And we forget what God has done and what he's doing in our lives. And today we're going to talk about a story, we're going to talk about a miracle that Jesus performed, and we're going to talk about the storm. We're going to talk about him calming the storm, and, and, and hopefully for some of you who maybe are in a storm right now, maybe today will bring you some peace. Maybe today will bring you some <laughs> every now and then it's good to take that breath and just have that moment where you're just, oh, it's going to be okay. So we're going to talk about the story. We're going to talk about the lesson <clears throat> from that story, and then we're going to talk about how that applies to us today. Now, sometimes we end, we end sermons, and I'm going I'm to warn you ahead of time that those that are watching online can tune out when I, when I, when I get to the end, or you guys can, you know, la, 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 cover your ears. Um, the plan wasn't in this series to ask a question at the end, like we did with parables. We ended each each uh, each sermon with you know a question, a challenge, us or whatever. It just turned out that this week there ends up being a question. Um, it's just the way it worked out. It wasn't in my plans. It just worked out, and it and it fits. Um, and it's not the most gruesome, most difficult, most challenging question we've ever asked here. But I still don't like it. <laughs> Honestly, I may like it less than some of the other questions we've asked, and you'll see when, when we when we get to it. But I wanted to give you that warning, just in case you did want to you know tune out or or uh, <laughs> or uh, yeah, cover your ears. Some are covering their ears already. Thanks so much. Um, we haven't gone that far yet. I'll warn you. I'll give you the signal. This is this is the time. Oh Lord, help us all. <laughs> and so we're going to talk about the story. And the story we're going to talk about takes place in Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. Okay? And that day when the evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind 
and the waves obey him. So that's the story. Not very long. Last week we, re- we read the resurrection story, and that was like, a, you know, a hundred verses or something like that, 70 some verses we read. Okay? Not a whole lot, but a powerful and amazing miracle, an amazing story that takes place in Scripture, takes place right here. So let's talk about the lesson. Let's talk about the lesson. What does this story teach us? What does this story teach us? And, and be ready. There's a bunch of scripture that you see in your notes. There's a whole bunch more that's not in there. Okay? And you'll understand why. Because at some point, I'm just going to rattle through a whole bunch of verses. And, and you'll get why and understand why. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. See, Jesus has authority over everything. Okay, understand this. This is important. This is crucial. This is key right here. There's a lot of stuff we talk about but, but if you get this and, and, and we can grasp this, this will change the very way you think about everything that you face and everything that you go through. Jesus has authority over everything. The beauty of that is that it allows us to focus on what our purpose is, which is to bring his message to those that need it. See, we get caught up in all the stuff that's going on in our lives. We get caught up in all the circumstances around us, forgetting that God has authority over all of it. I don't need to worry about any of that. I just need to do my job. And there is a peace that comes from that. There is a a rest that comes from that. But how often do we really focus on that? Or how often do we focus on the chaos? We focus on the things that got to be done. We focus on all the things around us, forgetting Jesus has the authority over all of it. Colossians 1, 15 to 18. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. Listen, again, the authority of Jesus, the authority and the lordship that Jesus is titled with, should bring peace and trust no matter what we're facing. Because of who Jesus is, that should automatically in my life bring me peace and trust and faith, knowing that because Jesus has the authority, because he is Lord, I can be at peace. I can be at rest. The chaos could be happening. And I can be okay. Now, I'm not saying I can be okay with it, (laughs) but I can be okay. And yet so many of us get caught up in the storm. Why? Because our focus is on the power in the storm. When our focus should be on is on the power and the lordship and the authority that Jesus Christ has. John 14, 27, Jesus said this, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. See, the peace that comes from Jesus, okay, is not the failing things of this world. Because of who he is, I can experience him even in the storm. Because of who he is, I can experience Jesus even in the storm. It's not always this wonderful, beautiful, peaceful, loving, everything is going perfect experience. Sometimes our lives get crazy. 
Sometimes our lives get turned upside down. Sometimes our lives get crazy, and it's actually not our fault, even though, let's just be honest with ourselves, it's way more our fault than we want to ever admit to. Many of us are dealing with issues and problems, even years and years later, that are a result of our sin, they're a result of our disobedience to God, our rebellion to God, and then we get mad at God like it's his fault that we screwed up down the road. Well, <clears throat> everything should just be erased. It is when you get to heaven, but you may have to deal with some stuff now. But even in those situations, we can still have peace. Even in dealing with the results of our own sin and our own failings and our own mistakes and our own, you know, a, a, a dumb and ignorant things that we've done, we can still experience God's peace because we experience his forgiveness, we experience his love, we have the salvation that comes from him. And with that, I should not be going through my life like the end of the world is constantly happening around me. The peace that comes from Jesus is not reliant on whether the, my car starts in the morning. Now, don't get me wrong. If I go and try to start the car and it doesn't start, I'm, me and peace are going to struggle. <laughs> but that's because my peace is not based on Jesus. My peace is based on my car starting. <clears throat> if my peace is based on my children behaving, I'm going to have some moments where I'm not at peace. I'm going to have some moments where I'm not at peace. But guess what? My peace is not based on my children's behavior. If my peace is based on my health, Lord, help us all. <laughs> there are going to be moments where I'm not at peace. There are going to be moments where I don't feel good. There's going to be moments that I'm sick. There's going to be moments where I stub my toe or I, I hurt my back or I, I, I sleep wrong and I, I, you know, twinge my neck or whatever. If my, if my peace is based on those situations and those moments, I'm in trouble. But my peace comes from Jesus. And Jesus doesn't change because of my circumstances. Jesus is not dependent on my situations. See, it completely flips our perspective. So often we look at what we're dealing with rather than looking to him. We look at the storm rather than looking to the creator and the ruler and the one that has authority over all of it. We spend so much time <laughs> We spend so much time serving the creation that we forget about the creator. Creation, it's wonderful. It's great. It's magnanimous at times. It's, it's amazing at times. It's immense at times. But it ain't the creator. Nothing beats him. Ready? Here we go. John 10, verse 28 to 30. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Okay, these aren't in there. We're going to fly through these. 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. 1 Peter 3, 14, but even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. Luke 20 to, sorry, 12, 22 to 23, and he said to his disciples, therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on, for life is more than food and the body more than clothing. John 14, 1, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Psalm 94, 19, when the cares of my heart are many, your consolations cheer my soul. Psalm 34, 19, the righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Listen, this is just a few, okay? If I wanted to put the whole list, we'd be here for a while. We might be here till next week if we're going to go through and read the entire list of every single verse that talks about not being afraid, about trusting God, about putting our hope and our faith in God. My goodness, there are hundreds upon hundreds, and that's not a pastor exaggeration, okay? When I say there are hundreds upon hundreds, we are talking three, four, five hundred verses, in, in the Bible that focus on trust and hope and peace and not being afraid. 
Why? Why would Scripture have so many verses on that? Why would God spend so much time telling us, don't be afraid? Don't worry. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Maybe it's because we're supposed to trust him. Maybe it's because he's calling us to not be afraid. Maybe it's because he wants us to fix our eyes on him and not all the stuff going on around us. So let's talk about the application. <clears throat> I want to jump back into this, this story again. I want to read the story one more time because it's short. It's, it's, easy, it's easy to do. So let's go back into the story again. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. <clears throat> there were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. So now let's, let's get into this, this image. Let's get into this picture. Now, first of all, this is not some massive boat. This is not like, you know, was it Evergreen that decided to, you know, turn the wrong way and block the canal? Okay, we're not talking that kind of, that kind of boat, all right? And th these, boats were, these boats were small, okay? They weren't, you know, high technology. They didn't have, like, GPS systems and all kinds of stuff like that in there. There was no, you know, uh, a warning system of a storm coming along or whatever. You looked out. You looked at the waves. You looked at the sky, and you said, oop, here it comes. And they're out on this boat, and a storm hits, and it's bad enough that the waves are breaking over the boat. Now, if you don't know anything about boats, if you've ever been on the water, that's a bad thing, okay? That's a really bad thing. Okay, two of the worst things that can happen when you're on a boat is water starts coming up through the bottom. Okay, that's not a good thing either. Or it comes over the side. Either way, the water is meant to be outside the boat, not in it. Okay? And so they get hit with this storm. Let's keep going. It says, Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. <laughs> I love this. So there's a storm going on, and the boat is starting to go under. And Jesus is sleeping. I mean, if that's not a, 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 an amazing image, an amazing picture of who Jesus is, Jesus was sleeping. <clears throat> when I was a, a kid, I, I used to sleep very, very soundly. My mom can testify to that. Um, you could literally burn the neighbor's house down and I would stay asleep because <clears throat> one night the neighbor across the street had a fire in their house and <clears throat> um, police and fire trucks and all that, I mean, our street front of our house, they were pulled up on our sidewalk, in our driveway, in the street, fire trucks, police, aim, everything, lights and sirens going, whatever. My whole family was in my bedroom watching out my window because I had the best view of what was going on. The next day I get up and I'm getting ready for school and my parents say, you know, hey, you know, did you hear whatever, did you see what, I, what are you talking about? Last night, you're telling me you didn't wake up with all that, whatever? <sighs> gone gone. No clue what was going on in the world around me. No clue what was happening. I was out. Jesus is out. He ain't worried about nothing. He's not stressing anything. He is out. And the disciples go and they wake up. Now listen, several of these disciples were fishermen. Their livelihoods were on the water. When you're on a boat and a fisherman goes, uh-oh, you should worry. <laughs> okay? You should worry. You know, you're driving the car or whatever, and you got, you know, there's a, there's a buddy of yours that's a mechanic with a drive, and all of a sudden your car starts making a noise, and he goes, oop. You should be like, what, wait, what? <laughs> Quick, pull over, put it apart, what's going on? What do you know that I don't know? <laughs> they freak, they're freaking out. They go over, and they wake Jesus up, and this is what they said. Lord, forgive us all, because most of us look at this, what they ask, and we're like, we would never say that. Lies. We're just as dumb as the disciples were. No, 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 go back. <laughs> Teacher, don't you care if we drown? What kind of question is that? What, what do you expect Jesus to respond? Is he supposed to open up his eyes and be like, no, nah, if it goes down, it goes down. We had a good run. Like, what do you expect Jesus' response to be? Don't you care if we drown? I mean, you know... <clears throat> It, the, just the, the uh, in, 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 in what they would have asked, I mean, it's just like, seriously, guys. Yes, this is Jesus just like, yeah, no, it just, we're, we're done. This was it. This was it. The Son of Man came. I tried to save everybody, but a storm took me out. That was it. 
I mean, no. They come and they ask him, don't you care if we drown? He gets up. He rebukes the wind, said to the waves, quiet, be still. And the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He gets up, and he's like, be still. And it all stops. But see, Jesus doesn't let this moment go, because he could have just been like, shh. And then back to sleep. He says to disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Look at the question that he asked them. Do you still have no faith? Everything you've seen from me so far... Everything you've seen me do so far. And you sitting there thinking that I'm on a boat and the waves start churning and the, the storm starts coming, whatever, and you think that I'm going to let us go down. You think we're going down. Do you still have no faith? I mean, talk about a question. Talk about, you know, let's, let's go ahead. Do it with emphasis. Go one more there. Do you still have no faith? I heard an evangelist um, share this a, a long, long, long time ago. I don't even remember who it is. Maybe I've heard the story other places, so maybe somebody would remember it, whatever. But he was, he was traveling. He was heading somewhere to go speak at a church or at a, at a convention or something, conference or whatever. And so he was on a plane, and he's sitting on the plane, and the lady next to him was like, you know, white knuckle, like, you know, breathing slowly, like really, really nervous. And he turned to her and was just like, you know, what's the matter? I hate, I hate flying. I hate flying, whatever. I'm, I'm just so afraid that something's going to happen. The plane's going to crash and whatever. And, and, and was just really, really nervous. And the lady, he turned to her and he's like, <clears throat> he's like, ma'am, you don't have to worry about it. This plane's not going to crash. Well, you don't know that. You don't know, ma'am, I know this plane's not going to crash. Well, how do you know this plane isn't going to crash? He said, well, because I'm, I'm a preacher <clears throat> and I'm going to this, this church, this place. I'm going there to preach. And that's where God's called me to go. And I know that I'm supposed to get there <laughs> because I'm supposed to go preach. So trust me, <laughs> there is no plane safer in, the, in, in, in this nation right now than the plane that I'm on because I know where we need to get to and I know where God's going to take us. You're going to be okay. I mean, think about having that level of confidence in who God is and who he's called you to be that you can walk into someone else's storm, someone else's chaos, and speak peace into their lives. The Bible says that we're supposed to be peacemakers. We're supposed to be peacemakers, but how can you be a peacemaker if you're in the middle of chaos and a storm? If you're constantly, how can you turn to someone and say, hey, be peace? You look like one of those things. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all know what I'm talking about. That's what we look like. If someone said, describe a Christian in your, in your mind, that's what I would describe. The wind blows, and we're all like, oh, what do we do? It's the end of the world all the time. We're constantly in panic. We're constantly in fear. We're constantly worrying. We're the ones that have the truth. We're the ones that have a firm foundation in Jesus Christ. What do we have to be afraid of? We should be the ones standing strong in front of the world saying, no, 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 it's going to be okay. God's got this. You know what happens when you walk into someone's world and they've watched your storm, they've watched you go through all this stuff, and they see you standing strong and standing firm on the truth of God? Do you know the testimony that that is? When someone says, dude, how in the world are you handling all of this? Because I know who my God is. And I know that he is going to bring me through. But what if he doesn't bring you through? I got eternity with him. I'm going to be okay. What happened to that hope? What happened to that trust? What happened to that expectation that we're supposed to have in him? We're not supposed to go through our lives afraid. We're not supposed to go through our lives consumed by the difficult circumstances around us. We're supposed to go through our lives trusting and hoping in him. Do you still have no faith? If you are living, okay, how you're supposed to be, if we're living how we're supposed to live, pursuing holiness, 
Okay, this is where I'm gonna get myself in trouble. Just these next three, three little little phrases: pursuing holiness, living in repentance, and total surrender. If I'm living in that, and that is my life, and I am pursuing living in in that life, what do I have to worry about? What do you have to worry about? What's the worst that can happen? Well, I could die. And what does that mean? Well, that means I, I spend eternity with God. What, what's the problem? Like, what, where, where's the bad in this? Yeah, but I might suffer for a moment, but you got eternity with him? You might suffer for a moment, but God may use that moment to bring healing, to bring peace, to bring truth, to bring salvation to the life of those around you. So I got to suffer a little bit so that I can go and show somebody the power and the authority that Jesus Christ has over my life. Am I that full of myself that how dare I think that I would ever go through anything tough and anything difficult that God might not use that to not only strengthen me, but use it so that I could be a support to someone else? Maybe the circumstance that you're in, maybe the situation you're going through, maybe the situation you're dealing with is solely so that when you get through it and do what God has called you to do and get beyond that, you can turn around and be, and, and be a support and be there for someone else who's in the same situation or a similar situation and they don't know what in the world they're doing. Is it not worth it? Is it not worth going through your struggles so you can step into someone else's world and help them with theirs? Because if it's not worth it, then how do I turn to Jesus Christ and say, hey, Jesus, can you step out of the glory of heaven, step into this world full of mess and this struggle, and give up your life for me? But then I'm not going to turn around and step into someone else's world and be an example, <clears throat> and, a, and a, an example of love and, and, a, and an opportunity to show people love. <clears throat> if, you are living, how are you, uh, if you are living how you're supposed to live, pursuing holiness, living in repentance, and total surrender, then what do you have to worry about? Now, here's the question. Don't put it yet. Don't, don't, don't put it yet. Here's the question. I told you, it's not as hard as some of the other ones, but I don't like it. Whose boat are you sailing in? Whose boat are you sailing in? Because if I'm sailing in the boat with Jesus, I have nothing to worry about. If I'm the captain of my own ship, well, you all better jump out now. <laughs> I'm just telling you now, grab somebody. If you want to stick around, grab a bucket, because this thing's going down. No chance of making it. I don't even know where we're going, okay? No chance of making it. Start, everyone just starts splashing. But if Jesus is the captain of this vessel, if Jesus is on this boat, we have nothing to worry about. If Jesus is sailing the boat of your life, you have nothing to worry about. It doesn't mean the storm won't come, but you ain't got to worry about it. It doesn't mean the storm won't hit, but you don't have to worry about it. I'll go one step further. It doesn't even mean the storm won't take you, but you don't have to worry about it because you have him. In the middle of the storm, we don't need to worry. In the middle of the chaos, we don't need to worry. There's a song we're going to play, <clears throat> um, and as this song plays, you can worship, you can sing along. It's brand new, so, you know, um, I don't expect many of you to know it. Those of you online, the link um, is there in your um, in the, uh, the Facebook, the post or whatever, and you can watch it there. Um, <clears throat> but as this song plays... If you need some time with God, then use this time. If you want to come up front and, and kneel at the altar and pray, that's fine. You want to pray in your seat, that's fine. You want to stand and sing, <clears throat> whatever. But before we do that, I'm going to challenge you guys to something, okay? We did this in, in first service, and, and I, I told them that last night when I was, you know, here working on stuff, and God was like, hey, you're going to end like this. And I was like, no, I'm not. And God's like, yes, you are. I said, no, I'm not. And God's like, yes, you are. And I'm like, okay, you win. Um, <laughs> um, that's pretty much how it went. It wasn't a very long conversation because I was just, Okay, we're just going to do it this way. So it's on all of you. Um, 
we're not doing an eyes closed, nobody paying attention moment, whatever. Because the Bible says that we're supposed to bear one another's burdens. And by doing that, you fulfill the law of Christ. So we're going to fulfill the law of Christ today by bearing one another's burdens. If you are in this room and you are in the middle of a storm, I'm going to challenge you. If you're physically able to, I'm going to challenge you to stand up. If you're not physically able to, I'm going to challenge you to raise your hand. If you are in, the, in, in a storm right now in your life, don't worry about anybody else standing up. Don't worry about anybody else around you. If you look at your life and you say, I am in a, Nate, I'm in a storm. God, I'm in the middle of a storm right now. Just right where you are, just stand up. <clears throat> As this song plays, <clears throat> those of you that are those of you that are standing, <clears throat> be praying. Be praying for God's peace. Those of, us, those of us that are sitting, those of us say, you know what, I'm good. I'm not in a storm right now. Things are good right now. Praise God. Guess what your job is? To pray for those that are in the storm. So you see the ones. Look around. Go ahead. There's no, no secrets here. Those of you that are sitting, look around the room. Okay? See who's standing. If you know them, <clears throat> then, then great. If you don't know them, don't matter. Okay? When the song starts, pray for them. Right where you're sitting. You don't got to get up and walk over to them. There's no, you know, whatever. Just right where you're at. But be praying for these people. Why? Because that's what we're supposed to do for one another. We're supposed to pray for each other, support each other, lift each other up. These people have all admitted, I'm in the middle of a storm right now. And it's our job to pray and support them. You know why? Because my hope is that down the road, when I'm in the middle of a storm, some of these people standing, they're not in a storm, and they now can support me. So let's bear one another's burdens and fulfill the law of Christ. As this song plays, worship, pray, but pray for these that are standing. Pray for those in your life and in your world that are in the middle of their storms right now. The only answer and the only place to look to is to Jesus. Father, right now I lift up those, God, that are standing here asking God for your peace in their lives. I pray, God, that you would reveal to them, God, what steps they need to take, what things they need to do. God, if it's sin, challenge them, convict them, God, to repent and turn away from it. If it's, if it's emotional stuff, mental stuff, if it's family stuff, if it's financial stuff, if it's physical stuff, God, I pray right now, God, in this moment, as this song plays, as we take this time to pray for one another, I pray, God, that your healing hand would be upon them, God, that your loving hand, God, would be upon them, that you would bring peace into their lives. Help us all, God, to shift our focus onto you and not onto the stuff around us. We thank you, God, and we praise you for who you are. In your name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Join us as this